morning. Good morning. We could do better than that. Good morning. Any time above ground is a good time. So it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's give God some praise this morning. Put those blessed hands together. Another first Sunday. Another day to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. said let us make man in our image and in our likeness God the Father, God the Son God the Holy Ghost thank you for allowing us to witness a communion Sunday 11 times in the year 2019 God you blessed us from January 1 up to right now we've had ups, we've had downs We've had good days and bad days. But through it all, through it all, you allowed us to be in the number one more time. And God, we come today to, to praise you and to thank you for being the God and the Savior that you are. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, such our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. If you find anything like sin, cast it out to see your forgetfulness. 
For all of us have said some mean things. We have done some mean things. We have entertained some evil thoughts in our hearts and our minds. Forgive us and create in us a clean heart and put right spirits within us. Pray God your presence will be felt in this building today. Oh God, bless the leadership of this church, the pastor and the ministerial staff. Bless all the auxiliaries, all the boards in the church. In the name of Jesus, we need you right now. We need you in our church, in our homes, in our hearts, on our jobs, in our communities. We invite you, O oh God, to send your Holy Spirit into my heart this morning. Somebody needs a healing. Somebody needs to hear a word from you. Somebody needs to hear a handshake. Somebody needs to hear a testimony. Help us, O oh God, to be loving and be caring and be sharing. These and many more needful blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And for Jesus' sake, every heart say amen. 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 Now, I know this is a little early this morning. Can we all just stand on our feet and praise God? Because we seem a little dead this morning. God has been too good to us to just come in here and just sit and relax. For he is worthy to be praised this morning. I say, I, I'm not a singer, you know. One thing I can't do, I, I can't sing. And my churches say, Pastor, we got you. But it, it, it's some songs I like to hear. And it's one, some of goes like, uh, Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like Tina. Oh, he. Yeah. Ain't nobody. Oh, ain't nobody. Oh, ain't nobody. Oh, he. Oh,
your neighbor high five and tell him that he's our friend. God's been good. You told me to run on, I'm going to keep running. As they say, I ain't tired yet. I don't know about you. Hey. Amen. Don't you feel better? Don't you feel better now? Don't you feel like worshiping the Lord now? He didn't woke you up. I know we've been slower around a little now and then. You got to get some spirit when you come in the house of the Lord. Because God has been good to us. He woke you up this morning. Gave you food to eat this morning. You woke up with a roof over your head this morning, didn't you? You didn't wake up looking at the stars. You woke up looking at a roof, amen? amen? So you ought to worship him this morning, amen? Now we have the invocation. No, I'm sorry, I don't want to go backwards. We had a scripture reading by Brother Lee Andrew. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. And the gospel this morning is from John the 6th chapter, verses 35 through 40. And I shall be reading from the New International Version. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me but raise them up at the last day for my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God Just laughing. I told Fred to do the offering. I'm speeding back. That's what happens when you be off for a while. You start speeding on back because I'm resting. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we have the announcement by Sister Madeline Smith and the offering by Reverend Fred Pennington. Yes. Uh, good morning, Mount Olive. This is a time in our service when we pause to welcome any visitors among us. If you're visiting with us this day, would you kindly stand at this time and remain standing? Everybody's home this morning? Well, that's a wonderful thing. This is the first Sunday of the month, and there is something that the Courtesy Guild does on first Sundays. If you have a birthday in the month of November, would you stand at this time? And can I get some other Courtesy Guild members to come? And brother, can we have you sing happy birthday to them, please? We 
thank you so very much for being with us here this morning. I just want to I add this morning that we who go to Sunday school, if you do not go to Sunday school, this would be a good day to do it. The title of the lesson is Self-Examination. This would be a good day for you to join us in church school uh, this morning. And can we do one more thing? There are people who came in here and you don't know how they pushed through pain to just get in here this morning. So if you will greet the person on your pew, do not leave your pew, but please just greet the person on your pew this morning. Thank you. Morning, Mount Olive. Good morning, Mount Olive. Oh, I like that. It's giving time. It's giving time. It's a time when you can come and give God something back. He gave us everything we have, and all he asks is just for a portion. Uh, you have your envelopes. I'd like you to lift them up and please repeat after me. God, this is my gift. It is a seed that I plant in this ministry. And I'm expecting a harvest in this ministry and in my life. And I'm expecting it to be exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask and all that I can imagine. Lord, I thank you that I'm able to give. So put your blessed hands together and follow the direction of the ushers. Let us come. Give.
things come of thee. time. Are you ready? Preaching time. Of time to hear a word from God. And we have a preacher in the house. Amen. As I tell everybody, it's always good to go back to your birthplace. And I heard good preaching. But you know it's something to be back home to hear good preaching. And my pastor and your pastor, the Reverend Dr. Mark E. Crutcher, is a preacher's preacher. Amen. He knows how to say the word. For God speaks through him and he speaks to us. So the next, next voice that you will hear after this dynamic choir will be that of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Mark E. Crutcher. Let's see. Amen. <laughs> what I know. Give it praise. 
old sister crutch up this morning. Uh, she said, no, I got another hour. Get on, you can get on up, but I'm keeping my hour. <laughs> she turned right on over and went right on back to sleep. <laughs> Praise be to the Lord. Come on, give God a hand just for being a model. yourself a hand today. Just want you to know uh, God is marvelously good. Uh, on our Tuesday night we was trying to leave LA and the fires were burning. <laughs> no for sure whether they were going to let us out of there. Uh, but uh, all the other flights were going to take you here, there, and somewhere, and you still wouldn't get back any earlier. We decided to trust God. And know that when you stand up to trust God, some going to try you. We went to the airport and uh, just about 10 minutes before time to board our plane, the gate that was next to us, uh, they closed the gate. And they told the folk that they could not leave out until the next day. Then your mind go, about like my grandson, uh-oh. <laughs> but that's when you have to stay strong. And that's where you have to be affirmed. I said I was going to trust God and not trust people. And sometimes some are having to see if you can be shaken just before you get your blessing. And, 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 and so we sat there patiently. And then in about seven minutes, the folk called and said, we're not boarding your flight. Hallelujah, glory. Give God a hand. Somebody need to hear that this morning because just before you get the blessing you've been looking for, the enemy is going to try to shake your faith. Mm. And then, as a matter of fact, the only way your blessing can stop coming is if you give up on it because God ain't gave up on you. My, my Lord. As a matter of fact, God is just beginning to, hmm, hmm really do what he want to do. Ah, oh, my, my, my Lord. God is a marvelous God. He's a wonderful God. He's a merciful and a kind God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. Mm, thank you even for your word today. And so, O oh God, that the word may come forth, we surrender ourselves unto your will. And we ask that you we would use what you created, God, and speak to what you made. Then, O oh God, help us to be receptive to what you say, obedient to what you will, and thankful for what you've done. In the name of Jesus, let us say amen. Uh, God is just marvelous and wonderful, and I'm just thankful for the blessedness of the Lord. The more I live in the Lord, the more I realize he is just a marvelously wonderful God. Mm, even in spite of the stuff of the world. Uh, I want to speak to you. I want to take your attention to the fourth chapter of Ephesians, Paul letter <coughs> to the church in Ephesus. And I want to draw your attention uh, let's start at verse 10. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fulfill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors 
and teach us to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Mm. New King Version, King James Version reads, that's the NIV. New King James Version reads, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And I want to speak to you from the subject of equipping saints. When we were born again, at what time that was, <coughs> many of us developed the saying, uh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. But I want to sort of lift up to you, there's a time that you ought to get beyond that. That's a saying for babes in Christ. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. At some point, you ought to become a saint which means that you have had spiritual maturity. Now, you don't look like you looked when you was a baby. I don't see any baby carriages sitting around in the aisle. I don't see any milk bottles. I don't see y'all with no bibs. Yeah. Huh. Uh, used to be somebody would have to mush up your food and put it in your mouth. But now, you're going to go back there and, and, and about an hour from now, <laughs> some of you ain't even use a fork. They're going to reach over there and grab that piece of sausage and it's gone. Which means that you can handle some stuff you used to couldn't handle them. And nobody has the spoon feeds you now. And by the same token, spiritually, the pastor should not have to spoon feed you the word of God. Hmm. You, you ought to be able to handle some meat and, and help somebody else to handle some meat as well. And, and, and so, so God expect for us to grow he said, I don't want no immature children. I want you to grow up to be saints uh, and, 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 and see the difference in your life. And so I want to lift up that, first of all, God has equipped us well. And I just want to get rid of every excuse that we got. We don't have an excuse to sin. We don't have an excuse to fail. We sure ain't got no excuse to go to hell. Yeah. It's a crying shame for anybody to go to hell. And I say crying shame because if they go, they're going to be crying. <laughs> and they say they're going to be crying gorilla tears. No, King Kong tears. But there's no excuse for anybody to go to hell. God has equipped us so well, taken care of so well, there's no excuse for the stuff that we see in our society. Mm. We love to act like God didn't tell us right. He didn't give us what we need. We ain't got enough power. We don't have enough faith. We don't have enough strength. Nah, nah, nah. You tell the devil you're a liar, you're a liar, and your pants on fire. And so, <clears throat> the text takes place with God talking about the empowerment of the church. Paul wants to focus Ephesus because God is instructing him to tell him what Christ has given to the church. We know the one who, 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 who descended is the one who ascended. And, and he's talking about Jesus, who was God, the word of God that became flesh. And that's a major descent. 
And so he became flesh that he may empower us. But he gave gifts to the church, gave some to be apostles. Mm. The, those who had the ability to, to divine, the, uh, uh, divine ability to build, to formulate new churches and to preach the word of God and develop church growth. Prophecy, he gave some to be prophets. Now some will tell you there aren't any prophets and apostles and, and, and all of them went out with the, 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 the first apostles. The problem with that is they were the first apostles, not the last. The apostles did not start until after Christ. Because you couldn't have any until you had the anointing of the Holy Spirit. All you had was some prophets who received in workers of God, the Spirit of God to do their work. But all of these gifts were given to the church. And folk will have you to say they don't exist anymore. Yeah. Now, you, now, you can't be one of the 12 apostles, but you can be an apostle if God wants you to be, if he calls you to be. And sometimes we listen to man when we need to hear God. Hmm. And, 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 and prophets, prophets are able to divinely inspire and anoint, uh, uh, become supernatural witness to proclamation of spiritual revelation into people's lives, revealing hidden things. If, 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 if we believed in prophecy in the church, we wouldn't have to call the psychic line. You don't believe in the prophet, but you believe in the psychic line. The, the prophet at the church ain't charged you a dime, and you paying on the psychic line. And don't even want to put an offering in church. God has provided. You running to and fro, asking everybody else, ask God. Trust somebody to speak into your life. Something not going to happen until somebody speaks prophetically in your life. The prophet opens up stuff in your life. Is there a word from the Lord? God, what is your word for my life? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And when the prophet ended in the anointing, you ought to be open for a word. God, what is your word for me? But you know, sometimes we're afraid of prophecy because we're afraid God going to tell us about something we don't want to deal with. So we run. Yeah. I remember we was... Uh, doing a, uh, 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 had a revival going on and the anointing was flowing and, 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 and it got so powerful that the preacher, this lady came up and, 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 and the preacher touched the lady, the anointing hit, the lady went one way, the preacher went the other way. I saw this lady that was in line to be prayed for, she was about seven folk back, I looked again, she was about 12 folk back, I looked again, she was about 14 folk back. <laughs> And yes, the anointing of God can be scary at times. But what's more scary is to not receive what God has for you. Mm. Mm. Because God is an awesome God, so don't feel bad because it shake you up sometimes. It shake us up. Yeah, God done, done some things and, and shook me up. I remember I, for one time I was saying, that, God, I know you called me. I seen these folk lay hands on folk and they be slain in the spirit, God. You know, it ain't never happened for me. I, I know you called me, God. What's going on? He didn't say a word. When Sunday morning this lady came to the altar, he said, pray for her. Lay hands on her. And I laid hands on that lady. She went out. I said, <laughs> but I was shouting harder than she was shouting. Then after about five minutes, she was still laying there. I'm trying to be cool. And I'm like, under my breath, God, you can let her up now. <laughs> and
And when that lady got up, I shouted again. <laughs> and I just want you to know, it, it's scary for us too. We don't know all of what God going to do. Because it's not about us, it's God moving. God takes over, stuff come out of our mouth. I didn't even mean to say that. Stuff happen, I ain't mean to do. Wait, Sister Cynthia. Yeah, yeah. She, she walked by me one day while the anointing was on me. Somebody, somebody set up, they sent her to get stuff, and she had to come by. I had no, no intention of praying for her. But when she got by me, my hand went boom. And she went right over her bloom. But God says, I don't want you to know. I want you to trust me. And I want you to know that I have provided and will provide and give you what you need. Mm. And, and God said, I want you to understand you really don't know what you need. And that's why I'm equipping you and I'm giving you spiritual gifts that you don't understand. You don't have to understand it to trust it. You don't have to understand it to believe in it. You don't have to understand it to be blessed by it. All you got to do is have the faith to trust God and know that he's too big for me to fully understand. But, 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 but he's also too loving for me not to trust. And he did too much for me for me to say he's not on my side. Mm. See, this, the, the sermon ain't going anywhere, nowhere like I intended to preach. Nowhere. Ah. Some pastors, divine, the divine ability to guide, to protect, to care for Christians, other Christians as they experience spiritual growth. Hmm, my, my Lord. Every preacher not called to be a pastor. And that's what messes us up sometimes. We try to send too many people to pastoring when they really got other gifts. We don't look at what the gifts really are. And because a person said they call, yeah, they call, but what is your call? Like? Yeah, because if you don't like people, you don't need to be no pastor. Yeah. If you can't love folk when they don't do what they're supposed to do, you don't need to be a pastor. If you can't pray for folk who talking about you, you can't be no pastor. If you can't preach to folk who are working against you, you don't need to be a pastor. Mm. If you don't have care for hurting folk, you don't need to be a pastor. Mm. Mm. If you can't love folk from all walks of life in spite of, you don't need to be a pastor. But if you're going to be a pastor, you got to love folk where they are and help them to get to where God wants them to be. Mm. And you have to realize it really ain't about you, it's about God. Because God wants you to be the instrument that he can just reach his people. Mm. You got to pull them up when they fall down. You got to pick them up when they, when, when, they don't, when, when they can't even get up. You got to show them the way when they've lost the way. You got to pull them out of the brows when they ran in the brows. And sometimes when they go back into the brows, you got to pull them out and help them pull the thorns off of them. Mm. And you got to do it in Christian love. Oh, my, my, my God. Mm. You got to encourage them when they're down and, and the enemy's got the best in them and they're ready to throw in the towel. You got to show them the way when they're lost and they're running around in the darkness and don't even know where they are. Mm. You got to help them find what God put inside of them when they don't even realize that God gave them anything. Mm, my God. You got to speak healing when they're ready to die. Mm. But God says, I'm not ready yet. You, 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 got, you got the encouragement when they don't even want to be encouraged. Mm. And, and, and so, so God sent pastors. But not only that, and notice he put pastors and teachers, he connected it up together. Because if you're going to pastor people, you got to teach them. You got to share knowledge. You got to share wisdom. You got to share understanding uh, about God's word and how to apply it to your lives. How many folk know the word ain't going to do you no good unless you apply it? Mm -hmm. Knowing the word ain't going to get you. It's applying the word that makes the difference. The devil know the word, but he don't apply it. Mm. He even know how to use it, but he don't apply it to himself. He tried to use it on Jesus, but Jesus told him it's also written. 
And sometimes you got to tell the devil it's also written. You may know some word, but I know God. Mm, my, my God. So, so, so what we have, these gifts, they call the fivefold ministry. Uh, they are gifts of the church that God gave. He said, why did I give them? First, I gave them to equip the saints for ministry. So in the, in the church, ministry should take place. Uh, we, what, what, what is this thing? First, we ought to celebrate God. That's what we're doing in here today about worship. Worship is about celebrating God. And, 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 and we come on the first day of the week, not the last day of the week. See, that's the problem with us. We think this is the last day of the week. Yeah, the weekend. And let me show you how the devil tricked us. We are saying, God, I put you last. go see you on the last day but this and, and, and watch this let me show you how conform we are to the world even on the calendar is first on the week but we call it last because we call the first day we go to work the first day of the week uh huh yeah y'all call this the weekend and you say your week gonna start tomorrow huh which means that you put God last when he first Mm. And see, and that's the mindset that the enemy tricks us. You may say, that's not important to God, it is. It's in the little nuances that we get thrown off. Because it even in the Word says, come the first day of the week and assemble yourself. My, my God. My, my God. So we come to worship him on the first day of the week. Tomorrow, the second day of the week. My, my Lord. And so, and, 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 and you got to understand, he says, I'm a jealous God. I'll have nothing else before me. I, I got to be first in your life. And God says, now, what, what you got to really learn is how to put me first. If you learn how to put me first, then I'll put you first. <laughs> my, my Lord. It, and, and so we come to worship him so we learn how to magnify his name. Somebody said, go and magnify the Lord. And let us exalt his name together. Uh, and, and, and it's some about when, and why do we come together? Because we can't do everything by ourselves. Some things you need the saints to help you out with. Sometimes you need the body of Christ to come together. Sometimes you need somebody to touch and agree with. Sometimes you walk in here, you just make it in here. And, 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 and the truth be told, and I'm going to tell it, sometimes the pastor just makes it in here. Mm. My, my, my Lord. He has the drag in here. The devil been beating on me in there. I need an anointing from the Lord. I need a word from the Lord. I need a word before I can give you a word. Mm. And sometimes what you don't know is your songs, your prayers, uh, your, your worship uh, lift me up and gets me out of the place. Oh, my, my God. So don't you think the devil passed by my house. Uh, matter of fact, he come by mine before he go to yours. Uh, let me beat him up a little bit. Uh, if I can beat him up a little bit, then I can go handle the rest of them. My, my, my God. And, and, and so, so, but what happens is sometimes when I get feel beat up, I come into the house and I hear you praise the Lord. I hear you worshiping the Lord. I feel your anointing, and that stir my anointing up. I hear the choir singing it, lift up my spirit. Ah, God. I hear somebody go to praying, and it empowers me. That's why we come to worship, because we can't get everything by ourselves. But I've gone to church sometime and wouldn't feel like doing anything, but left out of there in the anointing of our God. When I came to Bible study on Wednesday, I had jet lag and all kind of lag. I ain't feel like getting up and leaving the house. I didn't feel like doing anything. But when I got in the house Wednesday night, there was an anointing in the house. The saints was in the house. Worship was in the house. God was in the house. I forgot about jet lag. I forgot about being tired. I forgot about being down. How are you going to be down when God lifting you up? Here's what you got to know. When you lift him up, you rise with him. Because he said, I'll never leave you. <laughs> I'll never leave you. And then he promised, if, you, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw 
I'll draw. I'll draw. So when you lift him up, uh, it brings you up higher. You, you can't stay low lifting him up. And, and, and sometimes when you're in a bad situation, uh, you just need to lift him up. Sometimes you don't even know what to pray for. Just go and get your praise on. Go and tell him again to tell him thank you. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I thank you. I don't know what's going to happen, but I thank you. I don't even know what you're doing, but I thank you. Anybody ever thank God when it don't even look like he going to come rescue you? You can't wait till you see what you're going to get. But sometimes you got to go on thank him anyhow. Uh, you got to go on celebrate him. Uh, you got to go on magnify him. Uh, the Bible says magnify him. Because uh, when you exalt him, he going to get bigger. And the more you exalt him, the bigger he going to get. Uh, and as he get bigger, your problem going to get smaller. Uh, as he get bigger, ain't going to be no room for the devil. Uh, as he get bigger, ain't going to be no room for your sickness. Uh, he'll magnify in your body. Uh, he'll magnify in your relationship. Uh, he'll magnify in your family. Uh, he'll magnify on your job. Uh, if folk are bothering with you, uh, don't act like a saint. Uh, uh, rather than cussing them out, uh, go get some of your equipment uh, that God gave you. Uh, go in your spiritual too uh, and get a praise uh, of your God. Uh, if somebody bothering you, uh, matter of fact, go on in the tool, uh, get a prayer out of there, uh, go grab them by the hand uh, and pray for them uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, tell them I'm praying uh, that my God uh, will bless you. Uh, I'm praying uh, that my God uh, will lift you up. Uh, I'm praying uh, that my God uh, will touch you in the anointing uh, of his love. Uh, you watch your enemy when the tears start dropping down out of their eyes. Because my God said I can touch them in love. I make your enemy your friend. My God, I've equipped you in the power of my love. I equip you and I heard the Lord said I died so you can live. I equip you uh, with my blood. Uh, every drop uh, of my blood uh, empowers uh, uh, you. Uh, you got to tell the devil uh, by the shed uh, blood of Jesus, uh, I rebuke you. Uh, Listen at this. One of your equipment is the shared blood. Now hold on. Watch a minute now. I hear you, God. We throw that out lightly, but you got to know what it means. Not just the blood of Jesus, but the shared blood. That means you had a hand and killing him. Yeah, uh-huh, I know that don't feel good. I want you to sit there a minute. It didn't feel good to him either. How you had a hand, every one of your sins pierced him. That's what, was, that's what pierced him. It wasn't the knife, it wasn't the nail, it was our sins. Every one of your sins pierced him and caused his blood to shed. If you had never sinned, he'd have never dropped a drop of blood. Mm -hmm. And every drop of blood was for sin. Mm -hmm. So you had a part in shedding his blood. But, 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 okay, but now, but let me help you with it. He said, here's what you got to do. He said, you got to understand, my death can't be a suicide. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be shed. It's got to be shed blood. That means, it, and, and here's what Christ said. I love you so much that if you pierce my body and shed my blood, I'm going to take the blood and make it be a blessing to your life. Mm. I'm going to take the blood when you stick me here. Stick me here. And I'm going to take the blood that drop and forgive your sin. Mm. I'm going to take the blood that drop 
and heal your mind. I'm going to take the blood that dropped and wash your soul clean. I'm going to take the blood that dropped. And with our sins, we pierced him. But he said, now that you have pierced me, I'm going to give you my shed blood. Ooh. And you have the shed blood. God says, use it. If you're trying to overcome some, he said, take that shed blood and put it on you. And he said, and when you put that shed blood on you, them devils that's handling you, going to have to go. <laughs> them addictions that you got, they're going to have to go. Them, them habits that you can't get rid of, they're going to have to go. He said, don't let me sacrifice for nothing. You done shed the blood, now use it. And allow the shed blood to be that uh, an anointing. It'll wash uh, and clean your life. You have power. The devil can't stand the shed blood of Jesus because it was shed in his love. He said, I love you so much. See, you got to understand, in just about every religion you find, the people had to shed their blood for their God. even to the point that many of them would kill their children for their God. But our God says, I don't want you to shed your blood for me. I'm going to shed mine for you. Mm. And what I want you to do is apply the shed blood to your life. Oh, God. So next time you go in prayer, stop asking God all of what you want. Uh, just apply the blood of Jesus to your life. To everything that you ain't been able to get rid of, apply the blood. To everything the devil been beating you down with, apply the blood. To them chain that he got on you, take that blood and drop it on that chain. You see it begin to melt away. My hundred Take that blood and take it on that wrap it and anoint your neck and watch that yoke that he got on your neck begin to dissolve and fall off uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, God said, tell you today, uh, I sent my blood uh, so you can be free. Uh, I shed my blood uh, so you can be holy. Uh, I shed my blood uh, so you can be a saint of God. Uh, God said, get up out of your carnal mind. Get up out of your earthliness. Get up out of your excuses. Uh, get up out your doubt. Uh, take that blood and spare it uh, on your mind. Uh, anoint it with the blood. Uh, anoint your eyes. Uh, he said, anoint your mouth. Uh, and you'll stop cussing folk out. Uh, anoint your ears. Uh, and you'll stop listening uh, to backbiting and gossip. Uh, anoint your heart. Uh, and you won't accept sin. Uh, he said, anoint your whole body. Uh, and you'll walk with God. Uh, live with God. Uh, serve God. Uh, be faithful. And he says, my word this morning comes with a caution label. He says, don't wait too long. Because stuff is already moving. When you hear my word, don't harden your heart. For now is the appointed time. He said, because destruction is already upon you. You don't have to wait on it. You're already in the latter days. So he says, don't wait. Matter of fact, you've been waiting too long now. Go ahead and apply it. He says, try me. 
you want to know. If my servant is speaking the truth, he said, try me. Spirit of the Lord says, I love you so dearly. And he says, it breaks my heart to see you let the enemy handle you day after day. He said, I listen to you in your frustration. And I try to get to message to you that it's going to be all right. He said, I see you in your temptations. You think you're weak, but I have made you strong. He said, you see yourself as a lesser, but I see you as a greater. He said, you're waiting on me to give you what I've already given you. And I'm waiting on you to use what I have given to you. He said, I watch you run from the devil who's really afraid of you. And I'm waiting you to come to the understanding of who you are. He said, but I need you to stop looking at yourself how you used to be and look at yourself as how I want you to be. He said, that's the way I see you. Not as what you used to be and not even as what you are now, but what I want you to be in the fullness. And he says, draw near to me and let me show you who you really are and what I really put inside of you. Stand all over the house. All over the house. Stand all over the house. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, no peeping. I even got my eyes closed. No peeping. No peeping. And please, folk, learn to be obedient. Right now, I want you to think about what you need God to do for you. I want you to think about what you want to be in God. Hmm. What you want to be in God. And I want to declare to you, you already that. And what you want to do for God, I want to declare that you already have the power to do it. You've been equipped to walk as an anointed vessel in God. I want you to take just a minute all over the house and just cry out to God in your own way right about now. Just cry out to him. Mm. God, thank you. May open your eyes. Come on, give him praise. 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 
Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. All over the house, give him praise. We worship you, God. We magnify you, God. We exalt you, God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, oh God. We glorify you, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Repeat after me. I am a child of the Most High God. I will not allow the enemy to use me anymore as the lesser. For greater is it he that is within me than he that is in the world. I am equipped to live for God, to live with God. I'm equipped to overcome anything and everything. I'm equipped to live holy in the sight of my God. I'm equipped to stand in the gap for those around me. From this day forward, I will walk in the power of my God. I will not be defeated. I will not go back to the tricks of the enemy. Uh, I shall live and not die in a world of sin. For I shall be with God eternal. Come on, give him a hand all over the house. Somebody may need to accept Christ as your Savior. Somebody may just need a church home. Doors of the church are open. Doors of the church are open. Lord, prepare me to be a saint you pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanks.
paid our sin debt. So go ahead and live like a holy child of God, free of the bondage of your sin. The Bible declares that we ought to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Mm. You that do truly and earnest repent of your sins and in love and charity with your neighbor, you intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God meekly kneeling in your heart. My, my Lord, together let us release the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most briefly have committed by thought, word, and deed against thine divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoing. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have a mercy upon us. Have a mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have just collectively confessed our wrongness together. The wrongness that God died and has forgiven us. Now, as we come to the time of consecration, Almighty God and Heavenly Father, whom of that tender mercy did give that only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself. He once offered a full and a perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. It's in my sins too. And did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Say, I remember. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you to grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine. According to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institute, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partake, be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Say, I want it. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took the bread. I want you to think about how you have betrayed him in your own life. Don't just think about Peter. That's Peter's sin. Think about your betrayal that he died from. And when he had given thanks, he break it. Thank you, Lord. Now go and say, thank you, God, because he forgave you. Yeah. Like he did Peter. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take ye. Now after supper, took the cup and when he had given it to his disciples when he said thank you when he had prayed he said thank you Lord somebody say thank you somebody say thank you somebody say thank you 
He gave it to them, saying, This is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for you and for many, and for the remission of sin. Uh, drink ye all of it, for it is shed blood. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come, O oh God, to bless. The bread, that it be your broken body. And we come, O oh God, to bless the wine, that it is your blood. The blood that came streaming down up me, it, it was, it was the blood that made the difference. It was. It was the blood that made the difference at Calvary. And I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. For me, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, it was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood. Oh, never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word for me. One day when I was lost, 
He died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Yeah. They whipped him all night long. And they whipped him all night long. And they whipped him all night long for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Yeah, he never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Oh, I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. It was the blood. 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 My Savior's blood. I know it was the blood. He shed it for me. He shed it for you. I, for my sin. I, it was the blood. I, the precious blood. I, it was the blood. Anybody know it was the blood? Anybody know it was the blood? Anybody know it was the blood? It was the blood. That precious blood. That precious blood. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Let the church say amen. amen. Tell somebody say what the blood for me. Let's stand all over the house. Together let us release the Lord's prayer in our lives. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, with our humble servants, desire their Father, their goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and our whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O oh Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with his grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this our abundant duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The church, amen again. As you're standing over the house, I need to know if I can get your help to do something. I need your help to make this a true tithing church. Now, if you don't believe in tithing, you can have a seat. 
and I won't be talking to you. If you don't believe in time, if you don't believe that some folks should do, if you don't believe God said do, you can just have a seat and I won't be talking to you. And if you believe in it and not doing it, then you're not doing what God wants you to do. Can I get you to push out and trust God this year beyond what you've ever done? Look past the preaching, past the excuses, past the folk in the parking lot and the folk that'll call you on the phone. And would you just, for the next six months, try? I know you got bills to pay. I got them too. Yeah. Yeah. House bills, I got two. Yeah, because I had built the house where I was. But I can't live there. I had to have one here. I built the house I can't even live in because I can't live there and pass you here. So I know those things. I know the struggles. When I came here, my child was in school. Yeah. So would you trust God? And as I say, within that six-month period of time, if you have trouble with a bill, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Because I want to take this church to full obedience. Now the problem with us, the reason why we can't handle them stuff is because we're not obedient enough. And we want God to bless us. See, right now, everybody believes that tithing is something we should do. But we let something stop us from being obedient and trusting God. And you don't know how many blessings we hold from us. God can't do all of what he want to do until we go fully with him. Do that for the next six months. And I mean it. If you have a bill you can't pay, bring it to me. I don't talk frivolously. And I don't make promises I can't keep. And I don't believe in tricking folks. But the Lord says time. And watch what God do. Watch what he do. Come on. Praise him. Come on. Watch what he do. Yeah. Now, let's stop letting the world talk us out of doing what we know God told us to do. Yeah. And I mean that. And if you can't handle this up, ain't going to be no embarrassment. Yeah, that folk bring their bills to me now. But you don't know it. Because that's not what it's about. Come on, give God another hand. Just, I'm halfway in this world today and halfway somewhere else. And the somewhere else ain't with some other person I shouldn't be with. So let me get it clear. <laughs> let, me, let me get it clear. Yeah. As I'm standing here, the Lord is just, the Lord is running me in a place. Mm. And the reason why is because I see what's taking place and I can see what's coming and I want you to be ready yeah I see what's coming it's already moving upon us but the enemy has a way of tricking us to think that it ain't that bad because it ain't hit my house it ain't that bad But if we would look, it's hidden every house. 
has come into every neighborhood. Yeah. We just buried a young man last week who grew up right here in this church. 23 years old. Didn't make 24. You remember the sermon I preached with the hoodie on? Gangster Paradise? If I'm not mistaken, if you go to that song, it says, I don't know if I'm going to make 24. And the Sunday that I preached that sermon, the next day, somebody shot into the house of that very same family. All this stuff is connected. And for that week, God told me, I sat in the pulpit with a hoodie and y'all wanted I done lost my mind for real this time. Yeah. 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 They thought that, they really, yeah, yeah. Everybody ready to pick up the phone. He done lied. We're sitting up there with a hoodie on. And God told me to tell them, says, tell them next week you'll be able to tell them why you got the hoodie on. Not this week. And, and the next day, three guys wearing hoodies shot up one of the members' house. Black hoodies. All this stuff is connected. All of us, God been sending a, a message to my family everywhere I go. The scripture, Michael 6 and 8. Everywhere I go. Even on this trip, we went to mm, California. It's showing up. And we're in Nashville. Yeah. So, Look for those messages. And, and if you would help me, and I'm telling you why we need to do this. This church has to become an extension of God to hurting people. And they need to see us and feel God's love through us. And I need your help to do it. Let's praise God from whom our blessed flow. <laughs> saints and now unto him who's able to do abundantly above and beyond anything that we think that we ask or even imagine according to the power of God that works in us to him be glory to him be majesty to him be power of now henceforth and forevermore in Jesus name Stand, 
Stand still just a minute. Father God, Sister Brenda Joyce, Sister Lavinia Mays, both sick. And you're the God of healing. Brother Prati is sick. And you're the God of healing. We come now to just extend your anointing mm, to bring healing in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 